What's your favorite Disney cartoon? If I'm being honest, mine is Beauty and the Beast because it has the best songs and the best singing candlesticks. But a close second is the one where Donald Duck is a Nazi. In the 1940s, two thirds of Americans went to the movies every week. And a trip to the cinema didn't just mean a screening of the Maltese Falcon, it meant ads for snacks and being quiet and air conditioning. Yes, you lucky people, just sit back for a moment, relax, and notice the delightfully clean, cool, and refreshing atmosphere of this scientifically air-conditioned theater. This was before TV sets were common in most homes, and so newsreels filled people in on the visual happenings of the world. The Ile de France departs from New York Harbor on a mission of war. And of course, there were cartoons. <laughs> Walt Disney Animation Studios cranked tons of these out. They made 15 in 1940 alone. And that's how Mickey and Goofy and Donald wormed their way into America's collective heart. And so when America's heart needed a hand, Donald was ready. Mando Duck, here are your orders. In 1941, following the attack on Pearl Harbor and America's subsequent entry into the Second World War, the army approached Disney. They needed help, they needed branding, and they needed propaganda. Then the Pura says, we never will be slaves. De Fuhrer's face, in which Donald Duck has a nightmare that he lives and works in Nazi Germany, is the most infamous of Disney's World War II productions, and the only Duck film to have won a short animation Oscar. And maybe the only acceptable use of the, in the end, it was all a dream cliche. <coughs> From 1942 to 1943, Disney produced twice as much animation as they had in any year prior. And it wasn't just to keep domestic morale up. Supposedly one third of the 26 million Americans who saw the short Spirit of 43 said it motivated them to save money to pay their taxes. Just remember, every dollar you spend for something you don't need is a dollar spent to help the Axis. They even made the draft look fun. There is no disputing the critical role that Walt Disney played in the American war effort, which is great. And also a little strange if you subscribe to the belief that old lovable Walt was also a rabid anti-Semite. Yes, there are some ethnic stereotypes in old Disney cartoons. And yes, Walt Disney did join the anti-communist, anti-Semitic Motion Picture Alliance for the Preservation of American Ideals. And yes, he did invite Nazi propagandist Lenny Reifenstahl to America in 1938, but he also made a million cartoons about what a dick Hitler was, including the not cute and not fun Education for Death, The Making of a Nazi. <laughs> Germans are a super race. All of us will be slaves. Bad times. But also, sometimes, still funny sometimes. What do you think? Is it ironic that Disney made so many anti-Nazi propaganda films? Let us know what you think in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of This Exists every week. All of these shorts are available on YouTube and if you liked what was sort of clipped out in this episode, you should definitely watch them because they're fascinating little pieces of cultural history that are super disconcerting if you grew up with Donald Duck and it's weird to see him, you know. Anyway, be excellent to each other.